Hey, how's it going, everyone? So, as you all know, we moved into our new house in July, new to us house, and um, basically since like May of this year, everything's just been absolutely nutty, and it's had a huge effect on me making the videos that I need to make, want to make. Um, I went out to Long Island, met with Ray, and uh, we did the Motormouth Radio Show. This past weekend, I met with uh, Jeff Compton, and he's got a podcast called The Jaded Mechanic. I did that. That was at the ASTE show, conference, gathering, what, I don't even know what you want to call it. Uh, I met a ton of great people there. Uh, I met Lucas Underwood there also. It's a pleasure to meet him. Uh, just a bunch of great people. In the process, too, of everything that's been going on, me going up to Long Island and, and whatnot, my computer went poop. So I finally, I knew it was on its way out, I finally got a new computer yesterday. So I'm learning the ins and outs of it, I'm setting it up and everything else. So that's that's going to help me. It's a gaming style computer, laptop, basically. So this way I can actually work with, uh, you know, doing podcasts and like, um, you know, like video conferencing calls and stuff. Because lately I've had an awful lot of call for that to do like video conferencing calls. And um, if you want to check out the channel uh, Mater's Workshop, uh, him and I are going to be doing um, like a video conference call on to one of his uh, one of his show one of his episodes rather. So, uh, but yeah, check him out. And like I said, I'll be on there eventually. And like, check out the Jaded Mechanic, the podcast that I just just did yesterday. That should be out in probably a month and a half, roughly, uh, before it actually appears like on Spotify and stuff like that. He also has, has a YouTube channel, but it's all audio, as far as I know. Um, or at least from what I've seen, I, I do think he has like uh, podcasts, like videos of the podcast, like uh, what some other famous people do. And um, anyway, so I'm kind of going off on a tangent. That's my ADHD kicking in. So what did I actually want to talk about today? All right. I want to talk about something very strange that happened. And I thought I heard somebody coming outside. Something very strange that happened. And... I thought it was like a one-time occurrence and I'd never see it again. I was wrong. I didn't actually see the second time, but I heard about it. So, let me show you. I don't have a vehicle here that's exactly the same, but I have my Dodge truck here, which is close. The vehicle I'm talking about was an 01 F-150 with a 4.6. Now, let me show you what I'm going to discuss, and then you'll understand a little better. So here we are. My truck is a 4.7 liter. The Ford 4.6 is very similar in design when it comes to this part. Here's the ignition coil right here. Okay, the injector is down there. And if you look close, down there you could see it. Uh, let me get a little closer on that if I can. Yeah, that's the injector right there. But if you look at the orientation, the injector's close to the coil. Okay? Why is this important? Well, if you recall a while back, I had a Ford F-150. I don't know if I, I explained it through the video or not. The video may have just been about cheap parts. It's very possible. I don't recall. i got to look back at the actual video. I don't record anything. I don't, like, pre-record anything. I don't, like, write scripts. So this is all just off the top of my head. And I'm, I, there's people that are much better at this than I am. Uh, just like I said, I just I kind of go off on one way or the other. You know, squirrel. That's me. So in the video, I was talking about cheap coils, cheap parts. And actually, let me get my tripod. Hang on one second. All right, that's better. So in that video, I was talking about cheap parts, you know, cheap coils in particular, and, you know, what are you actually getting? Okay. That particular truck, it was a 01 F-150, 4.6 liter. It got towed to me, and the customer's complaint was the truck's been running terrible for a while, meaning months and months and months. They said it finally died. Okay, I checked it out, needed a fuel pump. I had just done a video on doing a fuel pump on something else. I was like, I'm not going to make another video on doing a fuel pump. I put the fuel pump in it. The truck started and ran. It's like, great, okay, there's the problem. I start putting away my tools now. It, the truck was only running for a couple of minutes, and then all of a sudden I start listening to it, and I hear it starting to chug and stuff like that, and it's like, hmm, it's not running right. Okay. 
So I start looking into it, and I notice the O2 readings are pinned, pinned at like 900 something millivolts. I'm like, okay, this thing's running really fat, like really rich. All right. Well, is it possible? Is it possible that I have a problem with the O2 sensors? Absolutely. <coughs> Excuse me. So. I start digging around a little bit. They're the original O2s. I'm like, let me throw a set of O2s in. I've seen O2s cause this problem before. Yes, I didn't diagnose anything. I just looked at it and kind of guessed. I threw a set of O2s in it. Start it up. Runs okay. As it's warming up, it starts running worse and worse and worse. I look, O2s are pinning themselves. And the old O2s that I came out that came out of there were soot black. Soot black. I actually started to make a video in regards to that, but the video went this way, then it went that way, then it went this way, then it went that way. That video would have been like four hours long. <laughs> I basically never made a video on it is what it boils down to. I made so many little short videos, I would have never been able to compile everything and then I just deleted everything. So I was like, all right, what the heck's going on here? I'm confident the old O2s, they were original for an O1. I was, I was confident they were no good to begin with. But that wasn't the problem. No good because they were contaminated from all that soot and everything else. You're never going to burn all that carbon off of there. All right, so I start looking into it. I notice if I pull the vacuum hose off of the brake booster, now all of a sudden the truck, the, the idle would shoot up to about 21, 2200 RPM, but it would smooth out and the O2s would start switching. Okay. All right, I've seen bad mass air meters do this. Guess what? I actually had a mass air meter from, a, we had a wrecked F-150 there that we had taken the motor out of because we used that motor for something else. Unfortunately, the motor that came out of the other vehicle, we had already gotten rid of it. It wound up in a, in a crush car, crush piece, and it got tossed. But I had saved the mass air meter. You know, it's a good part. May as well hold on to it. <coughs> I put that in, no change. Okay. What else could cause this problem? Running super, super rich. Well, I did check the fuel pressure. I forgot to mention that. I did check the fuel pressure. Fuel pressure was exactly where it needed to be. Okay. That thing had a vacuum hose that goes to the pressure regulator. I checked that. Perfect. No problem. Okay. What the heck's going on here? I checked the intake for restrictions. I checked to make sure there wasn't like a dirt dauber nest somewhere. If you recall that one video I had with the Ford Ranger, I'll see if I can't find it and put a link here somewhere. If you recall, that thing would all of a sudden start sucking oil because it had a dirt dauber nest in the intake and it started, it, it created such a vacuum leak in the intake that through the breather, it would actually suck oil from the motor out and suck through the engine and you had like a James Bond smoke screen behind you. Everything was fine. Okay. Pulled the O2s out and I put a, I have a vacuum and pressure tester that I put into where one of the O2s goes. I checked both sides, revved it up and everything else. There's no pressure, no back pressures. I mean, very, 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 very little, like just a hair, which is okay, which means, okay, the exhaust is free flowing. All right. Check with a vacuum gauge on the intake side. Everything's where it's supposed to be. What the heck is going on here? All right. So that's when I pulled the coils out. And I looked and I remember, I see, I see these coils that said, you know, danger, lethal voltage. I'm like, come on. So I'm like, all right, are these junk aftermarket coils causing the issue? I don't know. Possible. The plugs were completely fouled out. All right. I put a set of plugs in it. I got new coils. I ohmed out the coils. The new coils had one kilo ohm less resistance on the, on the primary side. One kilo ohm. How those coils even work, those... those Lethal voltage ones, how they even worked is beyond me, but they did. <clears throat> Sorry, my allergies are kicking today. Um, so new coils, new plugs, started up, ran a little bit better. But then again, that's because it had new plugs in that. Ran a little bit better, but no, it still wasn't right. So what I noticed was when you started it cold, especially if you like let it sit overnight, you started up you, and you just stuck it in gear and drove down the road, drove fine. Make it a mile down the road, and as long as you were into the throttle, you never really noticed it. 
you turn around to come back as soon as you like pulled over slowed down the thing started chugging like it was loading up nail it get on the gas and it was like boom, 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 and it would take off and it was like you could see black smoke out the tailpipe I'm like man why is this thing running so rich it was almost as if it was in its uh, cold start fuel strategy what does that mean I might even be saying it wrong it's possible I've had people comment that I say things wrong okay I don't know every technical term it's possible I'm saying it wrong I don't know but it was as if it was as if the truck was thinking it was in cold start mode but the idle would come down when you have a carbureted vehicle the choke sets when you go to start it so it runs very rich while it's cold until the motor gets temperature in it. The reason for the temperature is it atomizes the fuel as it goes through the intake. It helps the fuel burn. <clears throat> so on a fuel injected car, it has to richen up the mixture as it goes into the motor because it can't, it doesn't really control the air, it controls the fuel. Yes, it controls the air through the idle air controller or if it's electric throttle body through the actual throttle blade, but it has to add fuel also. It was as if it was controlling the idle portion, but not the fueling portion. But if I looked at the fuel um, runtime, like the injector on time, it seemed like it right, was right, right where it was supposed to be. And I even compared it to another truck at the time to see, and it was close. It was a little higher than the other truck, but not enough to where I thought it would cause a problem. Okay, so I actually reached out to somebody, happens to be my son-in-law, Adam, He's a master Ford tech. And I was talking to him about it. And I reached out to another friend of mine who is an amazing technician. Uh, he's the guy that would come to the Chrysler shop whenever you had major problems that you couldn't figure out, Alan Stasiak. And Alan is always a whiz when it comes to figuring stuff like this out. Alan had mentioned running like redundant grounds to the motor and stuff like that, just to see. And so I, I did do that because I couldn't find anything. Nothing made a difference. Talking to my son-in-law, Adam, and he says, you know what? He goes, we had a lot of problems with computers on those trucks. He goes, good luck finding one. You know, he goes, you're probably better off finding a used one having it reprogrammed. <clears throat> Luckily, we had that computer from that one truck that we took the motor out of. It was the right computer for that truck. All right, so general consensus between Alan, myself, and, uh, my son-in-law Adam was let's put a computer in this and see what happens we take the computer we get it ready to put into the truck we have a programmer that comes now the programmer that came to the shop this is at Joe and Moe's shop when I was there the programmer that came to the shop he was the guy that the dealerships would call on when they had drivability issues that they couldn't figure out so they would call this guy and he would come down and you know he would be you know yeah the dealerships have their own ability to program and stuff but when they had a problem that they were just like bumping their heads on, like what in the heck's going on? Well, like I was having with this truck, they would call him. So he came down and he knew what the situation was and he agreed, yeah, probably a bad computer considering everything else I've checked and everything I've done. So he puts a computer in and I'm right there while he's doing it. We put the computer in, he programs everything. He's like, all right, let's start it. Start it up, starts, runs beautiful goes to run like poop within 90 seconds but it was like a slow progression to running like poop when the idle was high because it was cold it was fine and then just just as it idle came down just slowly started running terrible so him and I start going through everything on this truck and we're butting our heads and we're trying to like think because sometimes it's really good to have somebody that you can bounce stuff off of and he was the type of guy I could bounce stuff off of his name was Alan also. We're both scratching our heads. Like, this makes absolutely no sense. Now, I had thought, and Alan had thought, you know, is it possible we have eight bad injectors? What's the likelihood of having eight bad injectors? Very unlikely. But if you looked at misfires on this vehicle, you could see all eight cylinders were misfiring, Roughly even. <coughs> Cylinder number seven was a little bit more prominent than the others, but not by much. Meaning, like, let's just, let me just give you numbers. 
let's say all the inject all the uh, misfire counters were reading like eight nine ten between all this all, all eight cylinders or all seven cylinders but number seven was up around 13 14 a little greater but not a lot <clears throat> could be anything could be slightly weak compression but i had done a compression test on it too i did a compression test i did a leak down test on the motor and everything was fine and i told this to alan So then we started talking about those coils that were in it, those lethal voltage coils. And we came up with, is it possible those coils set out some kind of a magnetic field that could have hurt the injector? Because on the Ford, like I said, it's right next to one another, closer than the Dodge. Don't know, but it's a theory we got to, you know, what do we do at this point? Let's put a set of eight injectors in it. So we pulled the injectors out. Mo had just happened to buy another truck at that point in time. for Because uh, we bought cars and trucks and vans and stuff like that uh, from auction to use for other vehicles. So he bought this truck because he needed a nose for another truck. So he bought this truck, happened to have this, the right motor, right injectors in it. So we took the injectors out of that truck, swapped it into that truck, and guess what? It fixed it. We did look at the injectors that came out of that truck, and it was the correct part number for that truck. It was the correct original injectors for that truck. What is the likelihood of all injectors, eight injectors going bad? And the only thing we can, we can equate it to is the coils. The coils somehow ruin the injectors, and I think it's from some kind of a magnetic field or EMI interference that maybe hurt the, the spring that's inside the injector to, that allows the pintle to fire? I don't know. I really don't know. I, got, I have no idea. But we figured, okay, this truck is done. It's gone. Fine. And this was just as I was leaving Joe and Moe's. So this was actually at the uh, end of June. Fast forward to earlier this week. I get a call from a guy that I've known for many years. He's a very good mechanic. And uh, he says to me, Hey, he goes, I got a problem with this Ford truck, and I got to see what you think. I said, okay, go ahead. So he tells me I got an 04 Ford, Ford F-150 with a 4.6. He says it got towed into me, and the customer said it's been running like crap for a while, and all of a sudden it just finally one day it wouldn't start. He goes, I checked it out and needed a fuel pump. All of a sudden, you know, the little light's starting to go off, like, oh, my ears are perking up. He says, I put a fuel pump in it. He goes, it started right up. He goes, it was running great. He goes, and then as it's warming up, it started running like poop. Really? Yep. He says, I put plugs in it. He goes, I checked fuel pressure. He goes, I put 202 sensors in it. He goes, because they were just soot fouled. He goes, I can't get this thing to run right. He goes, I checked the back pressure and the exhaust. He says, I checked the intake for restrictions. He says, I checked the uh, mass air meter, make sure that, you know, uh, everything seemed okay with that. He goes, I even went and bought a, another mass air meter thinking that was creating a problem. He goes, I threw that in, it didn't fix it. He goes, I returned it. Because <coughs> he was getting stumped. I said, it needs eight injectors. I go, let me guess. I said, it's got some real crappy aftermarket coil. He says, yeah. He says, the coils actually say on it, danger lethal voltage. Yep, yep. I said, I told him, I said, get eight coils for it and get eight injectors. I said, I had the exact same problem, and I told him what happened with our truck. So this was in the middle of the week. So he just called me yesterday. He says, I'll be darned. He says, I would have never guessed all eight injectors would have failed. He says, I put the eight injectors in. He goes, I did put eight regular coils in it, you know, regular standard brand coils. He goes, and it fixed it. He says, I ohmed out the coils. He, and he said, and it was, like you said, close to a, a kilo ohm difference between the new and the old. He goes, the, 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 uh, those aftermarket, the cheap aftermarket ones were much, much higher, one kilo ohm. So I said, yeah. And I, I said, I couldn't believe it when, I, when it happened to me. I never thought I'd see another one. But there you go. So if you think about it, when you could buy all eight coils 
for less than the price of one quality coil? What are you getting? What are you really getting? So now, how do you charge a customer for that? I mean, seriously. I, how do you charge somebody for that kind of a repair? I mean, it's just that's a, such an odd repair. But hey, we got to get paid too. But there again, that goes in back into the memory bank up here of things you learn as you do this job. It's like, it's something so oddball that you would never think of it. You would never think. So he was saying too, his misfires on this truck were very similar. He didn't have number seven being a little higher than all the others. He said, but all the all cylinders were misfiring. So just, I don't know, really, 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 really weird stuff. So anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you. I thought that was very interesting. Uh, I never thought I'd see another one, and there you go. There's another one. So, all right. Um, I guess that's about it. Again, thank you to Jeff Compton. Um, I appreciate you letting me be on your show. And um, that's about it. All right, guys. Hopefully you're getting something out of my videos. If you are, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, have a great day. Keep wrenching.